All right, we're going to learn how to graph absolute value functions. So as you can see in red, you know, here, 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 I, I've already given you some answers. Um, but let's look at 37, okay? So let me uh, just zoom in a little. Okay, so we're going to graph the, this, the function f of x equals the absolute value of x, okay? So... How do we do that? Well, you could just put in a value for x, 0, and what do you get for f of x, 0. So we're going to graph that. Let's pick a different color. Let's get a bigger dot. There we go. Okay, now when you put in 1, in for x, for the absolute value of x, you get 1, so 1, 1. When you get 2, you put in 2, you get 2, so 2, 2. Then you can see what's going to happen. But what if we put in negative 1 right there? Well, what's the absolute value, value of negative 1? 1. So negative 1, you also get 1. Negative 2, you get 2. So on and so forth. And you will notice that is the graph of the absolute value of x. Okay? Well, we, we want to describe it fully. So one thing, it's V-shaped. It's in the shape of a V. This particular one opens up. The vertex is at 0, 0. Um, the axis of symmetry, where is the axis of symmetry? Let's get a red. It, remember, the axis of symmetry comes right downtown, so right there. That would be the axis of symmetry, which is the what? Y-axis. So the axis of symmetry oops why is it doing that is the y-axis what else this is known as continuous in other words it just keeps on going and it actually goes on forever and there are no asymptotes that's this word down here asymptote um, it's a line that uh, Approaches something but never quite touches. So there are none on this one. Okay, now let's do a, a good one here. Number 40. Okay. So let's get back into business here. I'm going to go with green, I think. All right, we're going to graph g of x equals 4 fifths times the absolute value of x minus 2 minus two now don't panic okay we don't even need a t-chart okay we can find the vertex that should be pretty easy the vertex is remember what makes this zero so it's two and then it's whatever this number is on the outside so the vertex is two negative two let's go ahead well i guess we'll graph that in a minute um how do you find the x-intercepts well remember i tell you this you got to solve for x so what do you have to do you take 4 fifths times the absolute value of x minus 2 minus 2, and you set it equal to 0. Okay, so the first thing we do, we'll add 2 to both sides. So you get 4 fifths times the absolute value of x minus 2. That equals 2. Okay, to get rid of this fraction, multiply by the reciprocal. Well, let's do it on both sides. So now we're left with absolute value of x minus 2 equals 10 over 4, which is what, 2.5? Okay, so let's slide up a little, give ourselves some more room. This is the point where you, once you have the absolute value all by itself, I mean, there's nothing out here or whatever, then you separate this into two problems. x minus 2 equals 2.5. And then x minus 2 equals negative 2.5. See, some kids think you got to make the absolute value positive, whatever's in here, um, right there. No. You separate into two. Then you add to here x equals 4.5. Add 2 on both sides here. x equals negative 0.5. So my x-intercepts are 4.5 comma zero and negative point five comma zero. I think we'll graph those two things. So four point five and negative point five. We can remember that. What I want to do 
is coming here, so we got a nice graph. Okay, so uh, let's see. What was it? 4.5, so 1, 2, 3, 4.5, and negative 0.5. And then <clears throat> the vertex was 2, negative 2. So right now, you could just, with a straight line, play connected dots, and there's our graph. But what if we wanted to also find the y-intercept? Could we do that? Remember, to find the y-intercept, you got to make x equal to 0. So going back, 4 fifths, absolute value of x minus 2, minus 2. Well, if we make x 0, we just pop it in there. Now, 0 minus 2 is negative 2, and the absolute value of negative 2 is 2. Now, remember, these absolute value bars act like parentheses, so we're going to multiply that. So you get 8 fifths, right? 4 fifths times 2 is 8 fifths minus 2, which is negative, uh, what is that, 1 and 3 fifths. If you go to a decimal, 0.4. Negative 0.4, it's got to be negative 0.4. So my y-intercept is 0, negative 0.4. Oh, look at that. We were pretty darn close. It's right there. That, my friends, is how you graph absolute value functions. Now take a break.